we want to talk about upper and lower triangular matrices. And one of the reasons that we're talking about this right now is because putting a matrix into upper triangular form or lower triangular form can actually help us to calculate the determinant much more quickly. So first of all, we want to say that an upper triangular matrix is a matrix in which all of the entries below the main diagonal are zero. So when we talk about the main diagonal of a matrix, it is the diagonal that runs from the upper left to the lower right. So the main diagonal is actually made up of these entries here. If we work from the upper left to the lower right, it's all of these entries here. And so if we look at that main diagonal, if you have a matrix where all of the entries below this are zero, so we've got a zero here and we've got a zero here, but if the one, the negative three, the negative one, and the one were all zeros, such that we have all zeros below this diagonal, it's an upper triangular matrix. And so when you think about upper triangular matrix, you want to just think that all of the upper values are the non-zero entries. We've got all of our non-zero values in the upper right-hand corner of the matrix. And then similarly, a lower triangular matrix is where all of your non-zero entries are below the main diagonal. All of your zero entries are above the main diagonal. So here we've got our main diagonal again. We have these two zeros right here, but if the three, the one, the negative one, and the two were also zero, such that all of the values here above the main diagonal were zeros, then we would have a lower triangular matrix. Keep in mind too that let's say we've got an upper triangular matrix and all the values down below are zero. Even if we have a zero up here, like we have these two zeros right here, that's still fine. The only thing that qualifies an upper or a lower triangular matrix is that all the values below for an upper triangular matrix or above for a lower triangular matrix are zero. You can have zeros in other places in the matrix, but if all those values are zeros, we can call it an upper or lower triangular matrix. So now we wanna look at exactly how to put the matrix into upper triangular form or lower triangular form, and once we've got it in that form, how to find the determinant. So because we're gonna go ahead and find the determinant as part of this process, we need to set up the specific equation where we say the determinant of A, and you'll see why in a second, the determinant of A is going to be equal to, and then we want the determinant of this matrix. So 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 3, 2, and 2, and then negative 1, 0, 1, negative 2. Now, upper triangular form is going to be pretty easy because it's going to look a lot like a Gauss-Jordan elimination process. We're just not going to worry about zeroing out the entries above the main diagonal, and we're not going to worry about getting all the values along the main diagonal to be exactly equal to 1 unless it helps us to get zero entries below the main diagonal. So for this determinant, the first thing that we would want to do is subtract row 1 from row 3 to replace row 3, because when we take 1 minus 1, we'll get 0. We want a 0 here in this 3, 1 position. So we'll keep the first and second rows the same, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0. And then here we'll take 1 minus 1 is 0, negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3, 2 minus 3 is a negative 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1. And then same thing here for the fourth row, we'll add the first and fourth rows and use that value to replace the fourth row to get a 0 here in the 4, 1 position. So negative 1 plus 1 is a 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 3 is 4, and negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. Now remember we're trying to get all zeros below the main diagonal, so we want to get rid of this negative 3. Probably the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and change this 2 into a 1, so that we can easily add 3 of this row to the third row to zero out that negative 3. We don't have to change this 2 to a 1, but it makes the math a little easier to get rid of that negative 3. So in order to change this 2 into a 1, we'll go ahead and multiply through the second row by 1 half. But remember when we do that, we are multiplying a row by a scalar. And remember when you multiply a row by a scalar, you also have to multiply that scalar value by the determinant. So in other words, if we bring this up here, we're going to say the determinant of A is equal to, and then for the determinant over here, we'll keep the first row 1, 0, 3, 1.
The second row will multiply through by 1 half, so we'll get 0, 1, negative 1 half, and 0. But because we multiplied a row by a scalar, because we multiplied the second row by 1 half, we have to multiply the determinant by 1 half. That's a rule we learned previously where we said if we multiply a row by a scalar of k, the determinant gets multiplied by k as well. That's the reason we wrote this equation out like this, where we made sure to include this value of the determinant on the left so that we could keep track easily of any scalars that we kind of distribute throughout this determinant. So then from there, we have 0, negative 3, negative 1, 1, and then 0, 0, 4, negative 1. And we'll look at more of these scalars as we go through this video here. But now we can get rid of this negative 3 by adding 3 of the second row to the third row. So we'll get 1 half times the determinant of a is equal to, we'll keep our first and second rows, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 1, negative 1 half, and 0. And then here, we'll multiply the second row by 3 and add that to the third row. So we'll get 0, and then 3 times 1 is 3, plus a negative 3 is 0. 3 times negative 1 half is negative 3 halves, plus a negative 1 is a negative 5 halves. So negative 5 halves, and then 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And then we get 0, 0, 4, and negative 1. Now again, to make the math easy, we want to multiply through the third row by a negative 2 fifths in order to turn this negative 5 halves into a positive 1. So we'll say 1 half times the determinant of a is equal to, we'll keep our first and second rows, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 1, negative 1 half, and 0. And then here we'll multiply through by negative 2 fifths. That'll give us 0, 0, 1, and negative 2 fifths. But remember, because we multiplied through a row by negative 2 fifths, we have to multiply the determinant by negative 2 fifths. So we'll bring that out over here as well. And then we have our last row, 0, 0, 4, and negative 1. And then we want to go ahead and get rid of this 4. It's the last non-zero entry below the main diagonal. So in order to get rid of it, we'll subtract 4 of the third row away from the fourth row. While we're at it, let's go ahead and simplify over here on the left-hand side. Notice that our 2s will cancel as a common factor from the numerator and denominator. So we're left with a negative 1 fifth times the determinant of a is equal to, and then we have 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 1, negative 1 half, and 0, and then 0, 0, 1, negative 2 fifths, and then in the last row we'll get 0, 0, we'll say 4 times 1 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, and then 4 times the negative 2 fifths is a negative 8 fifths, negative 1 minus a negative 8 fifths is negative 1 plus 8 fifths, or we could think about that as negative 5 fifths plus 8 fifths is going to give us a positive 3 fifths. So we get a positive 3 fifths in the 4, 4 position, and now we actually have our matrix in upper triangular form. Notice that we have all zero entries below the main diagonal here. We have all zeros. We have the main diagonal. And so this is an upper triangular matrix. And once you have a matrix in either upper triangular form or lower triangular form, this determinant can actually be found just by multiplying the values along the main diagonal. So if we look at the values we're left with along the main diagonal, we just have 1, 1, 1, and 3 fifths. So this determinant here is actually just equal to 1 times 1 times 1 times 3 fifths, which of course is 3 fifths. So our equation then is negative 1 fifth times the determinant of a is equal to 3 fifths. And then to solve for the determinant of a, to find the determinant of this original matrix a, we want to multiply both sides by negative 5, because that'll cancel out the negative 1 fifth over here, leaving us with just the determinant of a is equal to, the 5 will cancel over here, we'll be left with just negative 3. So we want to say that in upper triangular form, we found that the determinant of a was equal to negative 3. And now we want to go ahead and look at lower triangular form. So again, let's start with this original matrix here. We can get rid of these. Let's look at how we would put this into lower triangular form. 
and then find the determinant from the lower triangular form, we should get the same answer that we got when we put it into upper triangular form. We're dealing with the same matrix, so we should find the same determinant. So we just want to confirm that we do. But this will still be helpful because we'll see how to put a matrix into lower triangular form. Again, all we're looking to do is zero out the entries above the main diagonal. So what we could do here is, again, set up the determinant equation so that we can keep track of any scalars. So 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0, and then 1, negative 3, 2, 2, and negative 1, 0, 1, negative 2. So this time, because we're working on lower triangular form, we kind of want to think about it in the opposite way. When we work on upper triangular form, we sort of follow the Gauss-Jordan elimination process where we work from the upper left-hand corner and we just don't worry about zeroing out entries above the main diagonal. Now, for lower triangular form, we want to work from the lower right, starting with this negative 2, and we just won't worry about zeroing out entries below the main diagonal. So normally, we would go ahead and multiply through this fourth row by a negative 1 half to get a positive 1 in this lower right-hand corner. But what we realize is that if we go ahead and replace the third row with the sum of the third and fourth rows, we'll get rid of this 2 while the math is still easy. So let's go ahead and do that row operation. And remember, only multiplying through by a scalar affects the determinant. If we just do row operations, that won't change the value of the determinant. So we'll go ahead and keep our first two rows the same, 0, 2, negative 1, 0. And then here, we'll add the third and fourth rows. So 1 plus a negative 1 is 0. Negative 3 plus 0 is a negative 3. 2 plus 1 is a 3. And 2 plus a negative 2 is 0. And then we have negative 1, 0, 1, and negative 2. Now we'll go ahead and multiply through the fourth row by a negative 1 half. So when we do, we have to multiply the determinant by a negative 1 half because we're multiplying a row by that scalar. So 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 3, 3, 0. And then multiplying through by negative 1 half gives us a positive 1 half. 0, negative 1 half, and positive 1. Now let's go ahead and subtract the fourth row from the first row to get a 0 here in this 1, 4 position. So we'll say negative 1 half times the determinant is equal to 1 minus 1 half is a 1 half, 0 minus 0 is a 0, 3 minus a negative 1 half is 3 plus 1 half, or 7 halves, and 1 minus 1 is 0. And then we'll go ahead and rewrite the rest of the determinant. Now we just need to get rid of the negative 1 and the 7 halves here, but that'll be easier if we turn this 3 into a positive 1. So we can do that by multiplying through the third row by a scalar of 1 third. But of course, multiplying by the scalar, we need to multiply over here by the scalar. So negative 1 half times a 1 third is negative 1 sixth. So we get negative 1 sixth, determinant of a is equal to, and then we'll keep the first two rows the same, and then multiply through the third row by 1 third. So 0, negative 1, positive 1, 0, and then 1 half, 0, negative 1 half, and 1. Now we'll add the second and third rows together to get rid of this negative 1. So we have a negative 1 sixth, determinant of a is equal to, and then we'll keep our first row the same, 1 half, 0, 7 halves, and 0. And then for the second row, 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus a negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and then 0. And we'll keep the third and fourth rows the same. And then to get rid of the 7 halves, we just need to subtract 7 halves of the third row from the first row. So that's just a row operation. We'll take the left side, and then on the right side over here, we have 1 half minus 7 halves times 0, or 1 half minus 0 is a 1 half. 0 minus 7 halves times a negative 1 is 0 minus a negative 7 halves, or 0 plus 7 halves. That's a 7 halves. 7 halves minus 7 halves times 1 is 7 halves minus 7 halves, or 0. And then the rest of the determinant stays the same. And then to get rid of the 7 halves here in the 1, 2 position, we just subtract 7 halves of the second row 
from the first row. And so this will be our final step and we'll get negative one sixth determinant of a is equal to, here we'll get one half minus seven halves times zero, that's just a one half. Seven halves minus seven halves times one is a zero. And then everything else is going to stay just how it was. Now we've got the matrix in lower triangular form. And notice how we got there by kind of working backwards of the direction we normally would. We started in the lower right hand corner instead of the upper left hand corner. But everything above the main diagonal is now a zero entry. And if we look at the values along our main diagonal, we have the one half, the one, the one, and the one. And again, to find this determinant, once you're taking the determinant of either an upper triangular matrix or a lower triangular matrix, the value of that determinant is just the product of the values along the main diagonal. So the determinant over here on the right side is one half times one times one times one, or just one half. So when we do the math there, we get negative one sixth times the determinant of A is equal to one half. If we multiply both sides by negative six, we'll cancel the negative one sixth on the left and we'll be left with the determinant of A is equal to negative six over two or six divided by two is three, so we get a negative three. And that matches the answer we found before. We said in upper triangular form, we found the determinant of A to be negative three. In lower triangular form, we just found the determinant of A to be negative three. And of course, if you calculated this determinant using any of the other methods we've learned before to find a determinant, any of the more traditional methods maybe, you would still get the determinant of A to be negative three. But this is one method you can use, changing the matrix into upper triangular form or lower triangular form, in order to find the determinant more quickly.